Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Ada J Author Advanced User Forum. Today's topic is how our A to J clinics can ease your workload. On our agenda, we have a little bit of background, a discussion of the Justice and Technology Practicum here at Chicago Kent that started this all off, a sample student project, the A to J clinical project TIG that we're currently working under, our participating law schools, working with our law students, how much of your time is actually involved in this, when do you get your deliverables, and the request form. A little bit of background. The Justice and Technology Practicum at Chicago Kent was the first of its kind to teach law students how to use A to J Author and Hot Docs to create A to J guided interviews and Hot Docs templates for legal aid organizations. It was started in the fall of 2010 and has been taught every semester since. Our past partners have included Legal Aid Online, uh, Illinois Legal Aid Online, the Legal Aid Society of Cleveland, North Penn Legal Aid, um, Idaho Legal Aid, the Minnesota Fourth Judicial District, the Minnesota Legal Services Coalition, Legal Aid of Nebraska, and Legal Aid of North Carolina. The Justice and Technology Practicum has, is taught by Professor Ron Stout here at Chicago Kent. I teach the A to J component of it. Um, we have several steps, so it isn't just teaching the law students A to J and hot docs. Um, we require them to do field observation at our self-help web center, which is at the Daily Center, which is Chicago, um, Cook County's largest civil courthouse. They actually interact with pro se litigants trying to use A to J guided interviews um, and helping them interact with the courthouse. We have um, them complete a scope document, which is turns out to be more important than we initially thought. The scope document tells what they're expected to do by their legal aid partner and exactly what um, project they're working on and all it encompasses. So the scope document ensures that the legal aid partner is happy with the final project because they knew going in what they were getting. And the law student is happy at the end of the semester because they know what work they've done, they've completed it, and there's no misunderstandings. We also have them complete a research memo. The research memo is like any standard legal memo. It's about six to ten pages long, and it goes into the law behind the form that they're automating. So, um, for example, a fee waiver, it would go into what are the criteria, what law is behind those criteria, why is it set a certain way, when can it be used, all of that information to help them better understand the issue itself. We then have them complete a storyboard. The storyboard is basically a paper A to J where they map out exactly what questions they're going to ask and how those questions are going to flow. And then finally, near the end of the semester, they actually automate the document by creating the A to J guide interview and the hot docs template. In the fall of 2012, we delivered eight new guided interviews to legal aid partners. Um, three samples of those were a simple uncontested divorce in North Carolina, the annual report of the Guardian on the condition of the ward in Nebraska, and voluntary acknowledgement of paternity for Illinois. This is a sample student project. This is that North Carolina simple uncontested divorce that I was mentioning. It was a two student project that contained 28 questions in the A to J guide interview. So it wasn't super simple. It was more in depth than your standard, you know, one page court form. It explained legal terms like living separate and apart. It had five qualification questions to ensure that the form was actually being used by the correct people. It contained advanced logic to help the end user along. For example, for the living separate and apart section, instead of just asking if they had been separated for more than a year, it asked for the date of separation and used advanced logic to calculate whether that was more than one year from today's date. It also explained rights that could have been lost if this form was used. For example, alimony could have been lost um, if they had filed this form. The hot docs template contained nine pages including a cover sheet, a civil summons, certificate of service, judgment of divorce, and the divorce complaint itself. It was everything that a pro se litigant would need to file for divorce in North Carolina 
if they didn't have children and if they didn't have property. So the projects completed by our students are not simple. They're, they can be more in-depth. Um, so if you have a project that you'd like our students to work on, it doesn't have to be a one-pager. It can be more intensive like this one. Because of the success of the Justice and Technology Practicum, we applied for and received a 2011 TIG with our partner, um, Idaho Legal Aid Services. We are working to establish A to J clinics in three law schools. Because we got such a great response when we put out our request for proposals from the law schools, we are actually going to have seven law schools um, participating in the 2013-2014 school year. And then part of um, my job is to match legal aid organizations with students in these A to J clinics. So there's benefits for the legal aid partners and also for the law students. The benefits for you are free help. You get a complete A to J guided interview and a hot docs template with minimal resources devoted to that. And we'll talk a little bit more about what um, what's put in on your, your side. The benefits for the law students, on the other hand, are um, a deep dive into the law, procedure, and heuristics. It's an exposure to policy and ethical issues raised by legal services delivery and technology that you deal with on an everyday uh, basis. And it also gives them key competencies for emerging law practice like e-lawyering, unbundling, and cloud practice. The schools that will have A to J clinics this 2013-2014 um, school year are Columbia, Concordia, CUNY, Georgetown, the University of Miami, the University of North Carolina, and Chicago Kent. Under each name on this list here are the faculty members that are going to be teaching the course themselves. If you are interested in hearing them talk about their A to J clinics, we, you can go to YouTube, to our A to J author YouTube channel, and check out the Symposium on Justice, Lawyering, and Legal Education in the Digital Age. We had a symposium here um, in Chicago about a month ago, where, uh, in conjunction with the Kelly Conference, where our A to J clinic faculty uh, came and discussed how their A to J clinics are going to be run, how they see them changing legal education. Um, so it's a pretty good three-hour um, symposium if you are interested. And they're broken into one-hour parts, so you don't have to tackle them all. And as you can see, we have a wide swath of law schools across the country, but the good news for all of you who aren't seeing law schools that are in your area, um, you can work with any of these law schools. The students don't have to be in the same city, the same state as the um, legal aid that they're partnering with. As you saw, our Justice and Technology Practicum class partnered with um, legal aids across the country. So now with Skyping and phone and email, it's very easy to interact with our students and offer resources that you might not have at your legal aids. So what is involved with working with our students? You send in a request on our court form request, which I'll show in a minute. We then work, um, I work with you to define the scope of the project in terms of what exactly do you want, what resources have already been devoted to this, um, and then we add you to a list of projects and our students then can pick a project um, that pulls at them or that they're interested in. You then work with our law student to further narrow that scope and give them an exactly what you want, what forms need to be automated, um, so that everyone is clear on what, what the project entails. You discuss the heuristics with the student, so if it's something like if a, if a uh, pro se litigant would need to know that you can only file this form on Tuesdays with Judge X, then let your student know that. You know what this form needs to contain to actually get it to work for the pro se litigant. So we want to build those those rules of thumb into the A to J guided interview. And so you discuss those with your student. You'd be available for approximately five student meetings, um, email or phone, or if you are um, within the same area, you can always meet in person. Five is about the, uh, the approximate that we've seen in the last three years. Then you review the finished product at the end of the semester and you upload it to um, LHI or to your own server and you own the A to J guide interview and the hot docs template. They're yours to upload, yours to modify, and yours to update as well. So how much of your time goes into this? It's basically as much time as you wanted to devote, devote to this. A minimum of about two phone calls or emails, one at the beginning, one at the end of the semester to 
define the scope, and then to review the final project. Like I said, most students have approximately five conversations with their legal aid partner. The projects themselves are reviewed by the faculty members for completeness and flow. When I'm helping to teach the course, I go through the project several times in, in the scope phase, in the storyboard phase, and then in the actual interview itself. So the faculty members are ensuring that these actually work. But if there are broken links, they are fixed. If it issues with plain language, we deal with that as well. If you need a specific um, standard language in the beginning of your interview, you can let your student know that, um, and they can add that in. So if all of your interviews at the beginning say, we're not your lawyer, if you need a lawyer, contact so-and-so, that kind of stuff. All of your standard language can be put into these interviews created by the students. And the more interaction that you put into this with a student, the better your package is going to be at the end. How long does it take to um, get your finished product? Students complete the A to J guided interviews and the hot docs templates in one semester. So that's approximately 12 to 16 weeks, depending on the school. For the fall semester, that's mid-December. You'll have a final product. For the spring semester, that's mid-May. So the turnaround is relatively quickly to get get live A to J guided interviews and hot docs templates up and running for your uh, clients. Now that I hopefully have sold you on signing up to participate with us, how do you actually get a, a request in? So we have a court form request which a little bit is shown here and I'll go to the live form, but you include your organization name, your contact name, your email, phone. Here is the live form. You fill out your organizational information, tell, you, tell us a little bit about your projects, have you ever done A to J's, um, how many have you done, that kind of thing, what type of organization are you, are you LSC funded, and then what the project is, your project jurisdiction, and what you need. These forms don't have to be, um, the projects that you submit don't have to be a standard document uh, to file in court. If you want to have, if your program has a specific letter that you send out that you would love to have automated or other documents that might not necessarily be court forms, those can also be submitted for our students to do. So once you hit submit, it goes to a form um, and I check it and I will follow up with you. So just a reminder of our upcoming trainings, that should say 2013, sorry about that. The trainings are, the new users are the first Thursday of every month and our advanced user forms are the third Thursday of every other month. Our next one will be in September, but um, just uh, if you have any new staff members that would like to come to our live A to J author hot docs training, it's going to be in Chicago. Chicago in mid-September. You can find more information about that on Pro Bono's website. And a big thank you to Callie for letting us use their go-to meeting services. And I have my phone number and email on the screen. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And I hope to see some of your projects on that court request form. Thank you.